I'm Adam Sorokin. I'm here to try to win a second March meet. Uh, we won Top Fuel in 2010. Uh, what I'm trying to do actually is to get one more on my old man who won it in 1966. And an easy win for Mike Sorokin and the surfers. This, the Smokers meet at Bakersfield, California. One of the toughest in the land. meet in another all-female final because the opponent, whoever it is, is my baby girl. I'm Jim Murphy and I'm here at the March meet. The first time we won it was when I first started driving for Jim Herbert when he owned the car and the second time he had uh, had the car ready to go in nine days before the March meet, he died of an aneurysm. We came down as a crew, he was our leader and we were pretty messed up. We barely qualified in the number 16th spot and from that we came out the next morning and ran low ET and top speed of every round and won the March meet. It was the most emotional drag race or maybe event I've ever been involved in. Hello, my name is Tony Bartone. I am a two-time champ of the March Top Fuel Meet. My rival uh, lately has been Jim Murphy. He's running very well, and he has won it four times. Don Gollitz, my hero, won this race five times. My goal is to win it a third time, getting me closer to the pantheon of greatness and making sure that Murphy stays put. I am with Baysmore and I did have a fairly successful 18 year career racing several different nitro powered race cars, including fuel funny cars, a top fuel dragster, but never a front engine top fuel dragster such as what we have here at Bakersfield. These cars essentially became unpopular back in 1970 after the drag racing legend Don Garlitz had a violent transmission explosion which not only cut his car in half, but also his right foot. After that, not many people wanted anything to do with these things. But not these guys here at Bakersfield. These guys didn't get the memo, and they're all about these very unique race cars. They're unique because they have the engine in the front, obviously, but also they don't have much downforce, so they skate around a lot, and they skate around on a very narrow 13-inch tire. It's exciting stuff, and I'm happy to be here alongside my partner in crime, Cole Koontz. Cole? Yeah, here we are at the 59th uh, running of the March Beat, the top fuel class. Jim Murphy had mentioned he's here to win his fifth. Uh, we've got Tony Bartone, who is looking to win his third March Beat. We have Mindy Fry, who wants to replicate what has happened with Lucille Lee when she put down Shirley in 1982. Adam Sorokin's here to follow up what his daddy did and win top fuel again. And then you've got 
dusty green and uh, kind of a low buck entry. These guys are basically uh, on the skin of their teeth, if not somebody else's. And uh, this is an exciting car to watch as well. And as we go into qualifying for the last session, we'll see how these guys do and where everybody else is seated in the eight car elimination ladder. Drag Strip Rumble is brought to you by SCE Gaskets. SCE makes the widest range of head gaskets. From 8,000 horsepower fuel burning Hemis to Model A Fords, we've got it sealed. Mindy, in your qualifying run the other day, you broke an input shaft mm -hmm. 300 feet down track. In the old days, that could have been catastrophic. And thanks to the modern technology with the titanium bell housing, so you didn't crash, the car stayed in one piece. But what went through your mind when this clutch came apart? Well, I, I didn't really know what was going on at first, quite frankly. You know, I mean, the engine RPM came up, I thought it was smoking the tires. And then the light show started inside the cockpit. And I knew it, that I had blown up a clutch. I didn't like go, oh, input shaft broke. Blown. I mean, I just knew that the clutch exploded inside of there, right? If, if, anything can happen in these cars, right? And now I've ticked off another one that I've actually gone through. Right. Mindy's clutch explosion is an actual testament to how safe these cars have become over the years. Because in days gone by, a clutch explosion like this would have been tragic. And it often was. Next up, we've got the number seven and number eight qualifiers. That's uh, Adam Sorokin in the Champion Speed Shop car and Mindy Fry in the High Speed Motorsports AA Fuel Dragster. So this is a new team, a new car for her, and that always is a little bit disconcerting when you're a sure. driver. Well, she drove funny cars the last few years, and now she's back to her first love, in essence, with Nitro, and, and that's a front-engine top-fuel dragster. She says these things are harder to drive than the funny cars, and that's why she likes it. So she's on the bump. It's fairly imperative to have a good run. Adam, on the other hand, in my opinion, he's one of the best natural drivers out here. Wow. Both Adam Sorokin and Mindy Fry, in essence, auditioned for your old boss, Don Schumacher. And that's a whole nother backstory. But for right now, I think they're yeah. focused on winning this friggin' March meet and more importantly, qualifying. Right. So both of these guys are in a precarious situation. I mean, there's more cars to come and they are not guaranteed a spot in this eliminator. Looks like it's shaking a little bit on Mindy Fry's car while Adam's just making bacon there to the big end. He puts up a 573 at 239 miles an hour, and that's a reasonable mile an hour for that car because it's got a pretty short fuse. Now that was a good run, and I don't know what happened with Mindy. It, it looked like it shook a little bit. But, yeah, uh, that's, that's a shame. It's, it's tough for them because now they are on the bump and they can't improve, so hopefully they stay in the show. Well, it's a white knuckle time as we get our next pair, and two cars were not in the show, and that is Bill Ruskowski and Brendan Murray. My name is Phil Ruskowski from Victoria, BC. This is a front motor fuel car with a pedal clutch. This car is Tony Bartone's championship car that swept the series and held the world record. We took it from being the world's fastest small block dragster to the slowest dragster. My name is Brendan Murray. I drive the Running Wild AA Fuel Dragster. I'm from San Jose, California. I've been doing this 33 years. Ruskowski 
what do you say about this guy, except he has the only true, I would say, mouse motor in the field. There's two small block Chevys. Adam's deal, it's a small block. I'm not going to say a name only because it is a very... It's different. Yes. But this thing actually has the Siamese ports in the middle of the cylinder head. The exhaust valve and the intake valve are right next to each other. And sometimes they get confused. And that's not good. <laughs> but the one thing not. that is cool about this series is the different engines sure, that are sure. involved. You know, you have a Chevrolet small block. You have the 426 Hemi yes. that are actually the most competitive it seems. Of course. They're different things and you don't see that in mm -hmm. other forms of fuel racing. You know, I'd say maybe Fry is kind of sweating bullets. Ruskowski and Murray would love to just kind of ruin her weekend, which hasn't been that great already. The conditions are good. The track is clean, it's right. tight, uh -huh. the air is good, there's a little bit of cloud cover. The track temperature's been in the 90s all day. If either one of these guys struggle and don't qualify, it's no one's fault but their own. You can't blame the track, you can't blame the conditions. Will the Mighty Mouse of Roskowski actually put up a number that'll get him in the show? Brendan Murray also, he's been at this race many times. Murray's got problems, he's done. Roskowski, the crew looks happy. That must be a personal best or jubilant with their 668, but they don't qualify either. is Tony Bartone and Dusty Green. Uh, Bartone, who's uh, been the, the champ the last three years and won the marquee uh, two out of the last three years. He's here to, to go to the top of the heat, the uh, top of most of the popper most, and Dusty Green is going to be here and, and try to ensure that he does it. And Cole, the interesting thing about Tony Bartone, he's been around a long time, very successful in alcohol sure. funny cars, won the world championship in 96, I think. Uh, he raced a fuel funny car for a while right. with Big Jim Dunn. Sure. The Moon Eyes and, deal? Or? Yeah, uh, I forget what they had. They yeah. have, I mean, Jim Dunn has so many different sponsors right. all the right. time. He's good at that. But Bartone, um, you know, he never really challenged in fuel funny car. Uh -huh. But I gotta say, he's, he's reinvented his career, if you want to call it that, okay. in this class. And, and they're just badass. Oh, it's not that bad. He, he is, in fact, flourishing. You know, it was Steve Fox tuning the car. I mean, he's as epic as any, any of the other guys. And it's really the Absolutely. tuner that really gets this thing from A to B. Yeah. And, uh, but Tony's doing a good job. Yes. And, and you know, he's fighting a back problem that he's had. Right. But nevertheless, he won the championship last year. Yes. And, uh, you know, they're going to they're gonna be going for a number one qualifier right now. They want to be low EP. And that's it. Yeah, so right now Murphy's uh, low ET and uh, Green is second and Bartone's fifth. And let's just see how this plays out. Um, definitely number one is where the Bartone's got number one on the car. So number yeah. one is where he belongs. And oh my God, that thing's an absolute rocket ship. Wow, but look at Dusty Green at the top end. Holy guacamole. So that was Bartone with a 563 at 231 mile an hour while uh, Green puts up a, a speed of 256 miles an hour, top speed of the meet so far. It looks like he drove it way out the back door. You know, I, I, I don't know if his, uh, you know, his visor fogged up or what happened, but uh, that was, uh, yeah, he took it deep. So uh, there you go, Bartone sets low ET and he'll be your number one qualifier and uh, Green finishes third. So we're looking at an eliminator tomorrow, an eight-car show of uh, Tony Bartone versus number eight, Mindy Fry, who basically dodged a bullet. The 602 stuck for the number eight spot, and I didn't really see that coming. You know, I mean, the thing about this sport is on any given day, mm -hmm. anybody can win, and it doesn't matter if you're number one qualifier or number eight. Right. Mindy Fry has as good a chance as anybody or any other time to take out the champion in the first round at the March meet, and that would be huge for yes. her. Yes, well, both her and her team are gonna have to find a little more than they've shown uh, thus far. But like you say, man, you know, they race them for a reason because this isn't theoretical. We're here for the empirical. Who's gonna win this darn thing? And we won't know until they pair up. Our final pair is Tony Bartone and Dusty Green. Bartone has been the champ the last three years and has won the March meet two out of the last three years.
and pull the interesting thing about Tony Bartone. He's been around a long time, very successful in alcohol sure. funny cars. Won the world championship in mm -hmm. 96, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, he raced a fuel funny car for a while right. with Big Jim Dunn. Sure. But Bartone, um, you know, he never really challenged in fuel funny car. Uh -huh. But I got to say, he's he's reinvented his career, if you want to call it that, okay. in this class. And, and they're just bad asses. Oh, there's no doubt about it. He, he is, in fact, flourishing. You know, with Steve Boggs tuning the car, I mean, he's as epic as any, any of the other guys. And it's really the Absolutely. tuner that really gets this thing from A yep. to B. Yep. And, uh, but Tony's doing a good job. Yes. And, and you know, he, he's fighting a back problem that he's had. Right. But nevertheless, he won the championship last year. Yes. And, uh, you know, they're going to they're gonna be going for number one qualifier right now. They want to be low ET, and that's it. Yeah, so right now Murphy's uh, low ET, and... Uh, Green is second, and Bartone's fifth, and let's just see how this plays out. Bartone's got number one on the car, so number yeah. one is where he belongs. Bartone is on a rocket ship. Wow, but look at Dusty Green at the top end. Holy guacamole. So that was Bartone with a 563 at 231 mile an hour, while uh, Green puts up a, a speed of 256 mile an hour top speed of the meet so far. It looks like he drove it way out the back door. You know, I, I, I don't know if his, uh, you know, his visor fogged up or what happened, but uh, that was, uh, yeah, he took it deep. So uh, there you go, Bartone sets low ET and he'll be your number one qualifier and uh, Green finishes third. So we're looking at an eliminator tomorrow, an eight car show of uh, Tony Bartone versus number eight, Mindy Fry, who basically dodged the bullet, the 602 stuck for the number eight spot and i didn't really see that you know i mean the thing about this sport is on any given day mm -hmm. anybody can win and it doesn't matter if you're number one qualifier or number eight right mindy fry has as good a chance as anybody or any other time to take out the champion in the first round at the march meet and that would be huge for yes. her yes well both her and her team are have to find a little more than they've shown us uh, thus far but like you say man you know they race them for a reason because this isn't theoretical. We're here for the empirical. Who's going to win this darn thing? And we won't know until they pair up. So here we are, first round of Top Fuel, the 59th March meet. I mean, uh, qualifying was kind of nutty, but also, like, the field wasn't that tight. Kind of a slack bump at 6.02 seconds with Penny Fry. What do you think about this, Wit? Well, what that means, Cole, is that it's a kind of a wide open race. Yes. Because Mindy Fry and some of these other guys that didn't run so mm -hmm. well can easily find two, three, or even four tenths. Right. And that's huge yes. in this sport. In the first round, Sorokin with Pete Wickenberg uh -huh. here. It's anybody's race yeah. is what that means. Right, so Adam Sorokin actually is no surprise how well he qualified, but Pete Wittenberg is one of the race stories. I mean, he apparently has never been in a fuel car until this huh. weekend, right? Uh, yes, apparently he has not. He got his license uh -huh. finalized on right. Thursday. So here's a total rookie. He's been in the sport yep. for 17 years, crewing on this car, Yes, and it's a very interesting story. Going up against, possibly, in my opinion, the best pure driver at the moment is, is Adam. So he's uh, in a, and Adam's with a great team. So they're definitely the underdog. Well, as they get ready to stage, I will say this: Wittenberg might be a rookie. This might be his first uh, event. But uh, yesterday he looked very comfortable in the car, and he took to this uh, front engine fueler like a cat takes a taco meat. So here we go. Stage. Oh, here we go. Look, at Adam's out on him. Wittenberg caught him in the top end with a 235 miles an hour of 578. That looked like that was Sorokin's race the whole way. At 1,000 feet, Adam was certainly ahead, and yeah. uh, Wickenberg 
came around him. That's a huge upset. A 581-233 for Adam Sorokin, but he's not going to get his second March meet title. My name is Brett Williamson. I drive top fuel car for Mike and Sharon Fuller. I'm from Gilroy, California. I'm usually a goof off. Everything's funny, joking. The only thing I take serious is driving a race car. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dusty Green, driver of Steve Harwood's Nitro Hemi from Pleasant Hill, California, and my other car's Prius. So our next pair is Dusty Green in the Nitro Hemi of Steve Harwood. They made the long tow over the Rockies, and Dusty's really been driving the snot out of that car. He's up against Brett Williamson and Mike Fuller's forever young car. And Mike Fuller is a very spry, I'd say 74 years old, so forever something. <laughs> and they've actually won this event with Bill Dunlap driving in the mid-90s. Yeah, that's very cool. And Brett, of course, is a longtime alcohol funny car racer oh, yeah. and a lot got of a lot of, lot of experience. He's a good driver. So Dusty, like I said, has been driving it like a sprint car and getting it to the big end on time. Let's see how they do with this particular pair. The drivers pull up. They're pre-staged. Mike Fuller's dinking around with the injector, and it looks like they're ready to go. Dusty Green left lane, Brett Williamson right lane. Dusty had to wait a while. Oh, that might have hurt him. So look at that. Oh my God, a 588 for Dusty Green, but that loses to an inferior 590 by Williamson. Dusty had a 278 reaction time. Obviously, something distracted him on the starting line. And Brett had a 140 light, which in itself is not knocking the tree down, but there's gonna be a lot of tension going back over the Rockies uh, after that pass. Hello, my name is Tony Bartone, driver of the Bartone Brothers, number one three-time champion, nostalgia, top fuel car. I drag race because I have a need for speed. Hi, I'm Mindy Fry. I'm from Los Angeles, California. I drive the High Speed Motorsports Top Fuel Dragster. As I started drag racing at 16, raced alcohol dragster in the 80s. Ron Caps chased me around when I was 15. <laughs> So here we are, third pair, and I don't know, man, Tony Bartone, number one qualifier. That car is running pretty much like a rocket ship, and he's up against Mindy Fry, who honestly has not had a very great weekend thus far. They've really struggled. The car hasn't gone down the track, and, you know, it's Mindy's first weekend in this car. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter what she says as a racer. Uh -huh. I know her confidence is not 100% uh, uh -huh. at this point. But having said that, this is a great opportunity. You know, they have nothing to lose, sure. everything to gain. They're racing the champion. You give it everything you have. Meanwhile, Bartone, man, I mean, you know, he's the cat's pajamas. He's the three-time repeating champ, and he's won two of these March meets already. He's definitely here to put a third title in his quiver. You know, Tony's a very aggressive individual. And sure. He's an aggressive driver, and they've got a big gold number one on the side of right. the car, which right. uh, which makes you a target. So, uh, but he's he's an exceptional racer. Well, you don't want to be a target. Let's see what happens here. He tickled the bulbs, and then he double stepped it. Mindy was late, but she drove away from him. Oh my God! And it looks like Bartone has crossed the center line, so there were two cars in the same lane. Luckily, she was ahead of him, and. What an upset. That, that's a pretty big upset, actually, to, to see Tony uh, make a mistake like that. It, it happens. Hang, hang on, look at those numbers. A 559 at 249, that's a career best for Mindy. Yeah, awesome run. I mean, they, they got the team got everything together. Mindy did her job. Tony double-stepped it oh. on the starting line. Oh, exactly. unbelievable as yeah. uh, Bartone DQs when he crosses the center line. It's a heartbreaker for Tony. He, he won't take that well. Oof. I'm Jim Murphy from Santa Rosa, California. I drive the WW2 Top Fuel Nostalgia Drink. This year we're going after it, trying to win the fifth to Ty Gartlitz. It's been kind of a, a monkey on my back. We hope to get it off this weekend as the car is running quite well. I think it's my best shot so far. Greg McGee, I drive the Overtime Special. I'm from Exeter, California. I'm here to have a good time, and I will. I always have fun. <laughs>
Coming up is our fourth pair, and we have another hitter, Jim Murphy, up against Rick McGee, who also is a respectable local racer. You know, I don't know that much about Rick McGee, but uh, but he's a good racer. He's local. He's from Central California. Uh -huh. Jim Murphy, on the other hand, I got to race against him in Fuel Funny Cars. Uh, Are you smokes. that old? Uh, not as old as he is. He's in his 70s or 80s, maybe 90s. And his crew chief, the great Roland Leong, is certainly in his 90s or even with he's a centurion. But look how spry he looks also. Yes. Roland, I mean, yeah. this is the elixir of youth. Look at how young these guys look, and they've been doing it forever. It's a very professional team with Roland. Roland's one of the best in the business. Indeed. All around. You know, whether it's yes. this or NHRA, wherever, Roland is a winner. Well, think and about this as a winner. This is the 50th anniversary of him winning the March meet in 1967 with Mike Steinberg driving. How epic is that? If he could repeat 50 years later, I mean, look at the guy. It's so cool. It's amazing. But let's see, you know, it's a drag race. You don't give a winner out. You don't give a no. trophy until it's run. But this is definitely the team to beat now. Well, they're number two qualifier. And McGee, I'm telling you, he's always capable of going rounds. I mean, that is a rock-solid blue-collar operation. They call it the overtime special because these guys work late in the fields to pay for this fuel car. And let's see how it shakes out against Murphy. McGee is out of the groove and in trouble. Oh, oh he saves him. And then Murphy puts up a reasonable, very reasonable 571 at 243. But after that 59, 71s are like nothing that special. No, they're not. But, you know, that car definitely has the potential to step up another tenth, tenth and a half okay. and be right there. Okay. I mean, we know that. Rolling can tune that sure. thing. They have the parts. They have the budget. Yes. They have the driver. It's all there. It's just a matter of turning the right knobs. Well, that brings us to our semifinal pairings, and we're going to have Mindy Fry up against Pete Wittenberg, the Wunderkind, you know, the rookie. And uh, Mindy's got lane choice by virtue of the 59. The second pair will be uh, Jim Murphy against Brett Williamson, and anything can happen there, too. So uh, we'll come back with the semifinals of Top Fuel One. Drag Strip Rumble is brought to you by SCE Gaskets. SCE makes the widest range of head gaskets. From 8,000 horsepower fuel burning Hemis to Model A Fords, we've got it sealed. World Championships and you're the defending champion in this class but drag racing is a sport where yesterday doesn't matter you're here at the March meet what happened in the first round well I went up to the line and trying to cut the tree down I double stepped it unloaded the chassis stepped back on it and boom the rest is history he was gone anyway crossed the center line I'm aggravated disappointed pissed off at myself let down the guys who work hard. Let down the crew chief. I take this seriously. And uh, I'm upset right now, to say the least. Drag racing is such a mental sport. And losing is something that can stay with you for a long time. It's, it's very hard to get back in the game. But Tony Bartone has won many championships. At the next race, this will be the car to beat. Oh, 
We are in Pete Wittenberg's pit. Uh, there appears to be a crowd that has gathered around the car. The crew is working. Apparently there's some issue and Witt's going to explain to us what happened. Well, they warmed, They started the car. They were a little bit behind to begin with, and then they warmed the car up, and it didn't have any oil pressure. So that could be a number of different reasons, some serious, some not so serious. You have to hope it's a non-serious issue like, like the oil pump or the gauge, something like that. If it has a spun bearing, for example, then it's kind of uh, a moot point. But sometimes in these situations, you uh, you want to win the race so, so badly that you just, uh, and we've all been there, you just drag the car up there the way it is and cross your fingers and hope for the best. But, but that can be very expensive and dangerous. But you don't think about that. You just do it. But what's impressive here is the fact that Pete is getting in the car now to warm it up again is is one of the head mechanics on this car so it's just like the old days you know when the drivers when we all worked on the cars and uh and driving was kind of secondary so let's see how yeah, it looks like they're out. firing it up now yeah. well they got about 10 minutes to make this happen so i hope it's nothing too serious well you never know we'll see right now Okay, here we are, semifinals, top fuel eliminator, 59th March B. And we have Jim Murphy with the Ace Tuner Roland Leong pairing off against Brett Williamson in the Mike Fuller Forever Young entry. Uh, Whit, what can you tell me of, about Brett Williamson and how can he end Murphy's <laughs> near domination of the class? Well, it's, it's tough. Uh, you know, you have two guys that have a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. Brett Williamson's been driving in out various classes, but yep. mostly alcohol money car right. uh, since the early 80s. Uh -huh. So they have a lot of experience, but they have not found the winner's circle. Right. And Brett has yet to win one of these races. So contrast that with Jim Murphy, mm -hmm. who is here to win this race yes. for a fifth time. And then you've got yeah. this knucklehead Roland Leon yeah. who just won't walk away from this damn thing, exactly. right? So, exactly. Uh, you know, Don Perdome said that Roland Leong, if he's he's still doing this at however old he is, yes. Perdome said, dude, do you want to die on the starting line? And Roland said, yes, as only Roland could say. If I do, I die happy. Yes. And, uh, you know, so hopefully that doesn't happen, of course. So Brett Williamson's got a two-speed in his car. Maybe that'll help him circumvent these cold track conditions. He can short shift, perhaps. Murphy doesn't have that luxury the high gear only car. He would have to pedal it Indeed. on and off the throttle Okay, real quick. well, they're staged. No help for Williamson with the tranny or not. He immediately goes into tire smoke. Murphy blisters the asphalt, no matter how cold, to a 563 at 244. So Murphy's going to face the winner of our next pair, which is Mindy Fry against Pete Wittenberg. And the winner of that will determine who's going to be our March Pete Top Fuel Champion. Yeah, it's very cool. I mean, Jim Murphy, one round closer yeah. to matching Big Daddy Don Garlitz, and that's always something that's incredible. All right, well, we'll see how it shakes out. So this brings us to our final pair of semi-final top fuel competitors, and we have Mindy Fry in the High Speed Motor Sparks car. All of a sudden, that car has caught traction. She's up against Pete Wittenberg, who, I mean, a great story. This is his first race in a race car ever it just happens to be a top fuel car how epic is that it's jumping in the deep end so to yeah. speak he won the first round right which is very cool but in the other lane it's mindy fry Indeed. and they had low et of the whole weekend right in the first round with a 59 so his work cut out for him well you know pete is kind of a, a bohemian looking individual and i think <laughs> a free thinker and i think it speaks volumes about how well he can adapt to things you throw him into these beastly machines and he just absorbs it and performs, I think, pretty darn you know, well. The thing I noticed about Pete and something I really respect uh -huh. is he works on the car. He's yes. been a longtime crew member. Right. And when they warm this thing up in the pits, yes. they had no oil pressure. Oh. So they changed the oil pump and the gauge uh -huh. and hoped for the best. And they had to thrash and they yes. got it done. But he had to go from thrashing on the car yes. to then finding that zen oh. of crawling in the cockpit and driving because in these cars the key to success driving 
is to not get excited. You right. have to be very cool, calm, and collected. So this will be a test. Okay, well, I mean, let's see if the Zen uh, philosophy pays off for Pete Wittenberg. A pretty good drag race to half track. Uh oh, Pete's having problems. Gets out of it at about a thousand foot. He looks like he burns a piston or two in mini posts of 578 at 220 miles an hour. We saw Pete actually have a pretty good hole shot. Yeah. And uh, he had a 121 light to Mindy's 160. Wow. If the car had gone A to B, they had a couple hundreds advantage right there. There's a couple tenths actually. They have to go A to B. It mm -hmm. looked like it got out of the groove a little bit, maybe spun the tire. Let's, and yeah. in this game, mm -hmm. if you're not perfect, you don't win. Well, I gotta say, not everybody can have a storybook ending. Yep. So that sets up our final. We've got Mindy Fry against Jim Murphy in the final round of Top Fuel coming up. Mindy Fry, this is a true underdog story. You've been in the game since you were a teenager so many accomplishments and you are just one more race away from taking the title here at the March meet after all the technical issues. How does that make you feel? I, I can't think about it yet, right? Because like you said, there's one more to go and they ran a tenth better than us. You know, we've got some work to do, but it is going to be probably a pretty ugly final because temperature's dropping. It is anybody's drag race. Whoever gets their first wins, it doesn't matter if it's pretty or not, right? Good luck, Mendy. Thank you. And we'll see you after the final. So here we are at the drag strip rumble in Bakersfield. Yesterday's inclement weather delayed and ultimately postponed the final round of eliminations. So we're resuming action on Monday, minutes before high noon. The top fuel finalists uh, are preparing themselves for this joust. There's Tom Shelar uh, analyzing the track, trying to see if it'll hold what he's going to throw down. Roland Leong, Jim Murphy's crew chief, uh, is doing the same. You can hear how tacky, how sticky that track is, which will really help for uh, the ridiculous amounts of horsepower that Murphy's going to throw down. Jim Murphy has stated his goal, which is to take a fifth March meet title, tying the mark set by perhaps the greatest drag race of all time, Big Daddy Don Garlands. Murphy feels he is worthy of that honor. So here we are, final round, 59th March meet, top fuel. We have two ridiculous storylines. Mindy Fry in the high-speed motorsports dragster. She's up against Jim Murphy with Roland Leong tuning. Jim Murphy is going for his fifth to Ty Garlitz. This is the 50th anniversary of Roland Leong's conquest in 1967 with Mike Snively driving. Hey. Uh, what's going on up there? It looks like there's a problem with Murphy on the burnout. Uh, it was an uncharacteristically high RPM burnout. His crew members are crashing to get down there. Meanwhile, Mindy's backing up and she's just calm, cool, and collected. Top Fuel Bridesmaid, Mindy Fry, who's never won with these deals, is she going to win this on a solo pass? They're pushing Jim Murphy back, and it doesn't look like the car's under power anymore. This is a real heartbreak for, for Murphy. Uh, and there's Walt Stevens, uh, crew member for High Speed Motorsports car. He's cheering. The whole High Speed Motorsports team is cheering. Tom Sheilar points down and says, send it. Meanwhile, Murphy, uh, he's done. 
Mindy Fry is going to be the champion of the 59th March Beach. All she has to do is take a ball. And look at that blast. A 5.59. Absolutely stellar. Stout. That is as quick as she's run all weekend. That's low ET for the class. So Mindy Fry puts up her second 5.59, this time at 252 miles an hour to take the 59th March meet. But, but your heart goes out to, to, to Murphy and those guys. The proverbial joy of victory coupled with the agony of defeat. It took so long to get here. <laughs> what did it do? Well, seeing so really my second full pass in the car, felt like it hauled ass to me. <laughs> cool. That thing sounded like it was going through the lights at like 10,500 RPM. So we'll see what kind of my, what kind of computer I have on board. <laughs> <laughs> we busted our ass. We went through a hell of a week this week, but uh, that's what the young know, team is all about. I love all you guys. All right? High speed on three. One, two, three. High speed! Top <laughs> <laughs>